to talk about today is producing media. And I am, this is my favorite topic, uh, not just doing and, and uh, researching Commedia, but actually producing it, bringing it to life. I am the Dr. Frankenstein of Commedia. What lives? <laughs> and um, I, a few years ago, about uh, 2016, so four years ago, uh, I wrote this. This is a complete anachronist. And if you don't know what complete anachronist is, I'll tell you. It is a brilliant research and publishing branch of the uh, SCA. So if you go to the webpage, sca.org, you will see a tab that says Marketplace. And there you can look at all of the great complete anachronists there. Um, Nicholas is asking which edition this is. This is 172. And there's another one that goes with it. This one. Uh, this one is one. I'm sorry. This is 172. The first one is. And mine is 173 that I wrote with a, a few other friends. So um, the Complete Anachronist is a great uh, service that the SCA provides in that uh, quarterly, once every three months, uh, one of these little booklets comes out and uh, it uses the research talents of all the SCA members, uh, anybody who wants to propose a um, uh, doing one of these projects uh, can go ahead and propose it. There is a top-notch editing team uh, that manages those proposals and handles working with the authors to ensure a high level of academic um, precision, accuracy, um, uh, performance high level of academic performance. And I can tell you, this was the first time I had been held to such a high standard and it was a great learning experience for me. And it was wonderful. I loved learning about it. It was hard and it was great. So the people on the staff are super helpful and helped me through a great learning experience. I cannot thank them enough. I hope they see this video. I'll, I'll send the link to them and tell them I thank them a lot for their patience and teaching me and helping me get up to these great standards. So. Um, I also partnered with some other folks that were Commedia Geeks, uh, the first of which is this one, Dina Turnello, and she is, uh, she's a doctor in real life, and she's a genius, and she researches, like the rest of us breathe in and out, she just knows how to do it, and she's real good at it, so she partnered with me, she said, let's do two, let's do two companion issues of The Complete Anachronist, she did a deep dive into the research of the history and the characters, and also the scripts, which we call scenarios in Commedia. And so hers is all about a deep dive into the research and the, um, the history, the real life of uh, what it was, uh, each character and how they interacted with each other in uh, the scripts that we have uh, from hundreds of years ago. Uh, and, uh, and in her bibliography in this book right here, uh, this bibliography, you will find treasures. You will find a great mountain, a golden hoard of magnificent information for specifically pre-1600 media dell'arte. So she has a huge amount of great information in there. And she partnered with me, taught me a lot, and um, I got together with a few other folks to build this one. This is Complete Anachronist number 173. And what we did together is we produced a starter kit of what you need to do and what you need to look at. And I shouldn't say what you need. I should say what one can, because there's a million different ways to produce art. And this is one way that has a lot of options for you uh, to help you get through that uh, starter time. We also divided up all of this guidance into easy and medium and difficult levels because a lot of people I mean, everyone has their own different way of doing it and how they want to do it some people want to just start off easy see what they can do and you know warm up and then some people really want to make a deep dive into exactly how did they do it back in history you know exactly what year do you want to recreate what city do you want to recreate and bringing something to life that really could have happened back in 1580 in Florence with five people doing exactly that. You know, some people love that deep dive. So we have all of those options in here and divided up into three levels, easy and medium and difficult, depending on what you wanna do. 
So uh, wherever your particular happy place is in creating theater arts, I hope that this book gives you a really great starter kit. And then also, once you've gotten through the material in this book, and once you have seen the other uh, resources that it leads you to, I guarantee you by the time you get through all of that, you are no longer a beginner. You are going to find that there are uh, rabbit holes you wanna dig into. And uh, I'm, I'm certain you'll find your own way. Uh, and there's also plenty of people to talk to. I've got a, a bazillion uh, contacts in here that you can look at. So what we're gonna do today is we are gonna go through this and I am gonna share with you my basic recipe. This is the basic back of the Toll House um, chocolate chips bag, basic chocolate chip cookie recipe. So now of course you are gonna find your own recipe. You'll tweak it and you'll add you know, raisins or not or whatever you do to chocolate chip cookies to make them to your particular taste. So I highly recommend that you take this as suggestions, guidelines, and not rules, because it's art. And I highly encourage you to find your own way through the art. It's a beautiful, wonderful, exciting adventure. So it's what makes me happy. This is my happy place, if you can't tell. And <laughs> so I love to share it uh, with uh, anybody who wants to. Uh, some people really dig, dig into it. Some people say, yeah, I'd rather do something else. That's great. You know, this is for the crazy people who love to do this kind of crazy. Uh, so this is the book. And I'm going to tell you real quick again where to find it. It is at www.sca.org. That's for Society for Creative Anachronism. Sierra Charlie Alpha dot org. <laughs> and so go to that webpage and look for the tab that says Marketplace. And in the marketplace, you'll find uh, where you can order these books. And by the way, we're up to like uh, 180 something. Uh, the, no, 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 more than that, 190 something. I wonder if we've broken 200. Uh, you'll have to find out by going there. <laughs> oh yeah, silly crazy aliens. There's a lot of SCA acronyms out there. Uh, so the idea is go to sca.org and go to marketplace. You'll see the complete anachronist there. And if you do a little search, there's a search box, put in the term Comedia. C-O-M-M-E-D-I-A. Put in the term Comedia, you'll see those two come up. And you can order them there, very cheap. They're $4.50 a piece. And uh, you know the SCA does not get rich off of producing these, <laughs> uh, but they will send them to you very quickly. Uh, so I highly recommend them. And if you wanna be crazy and order a bulk of like 30 or more, then it comes down to like $3.50 a piece. So just so you know. <laughs> All right, Heather Bunger, Janie says, hi, hello guys. Thank you for watching on Facebook Live. There's all sorts of great juicy fun to be had here today. So um, I am going to share my screen with you guys. I'm gonna show you a couple of slides that are just gonna give you a, um, a kind of a kickoff. And I'm gonna share my screen, sharing the screen, there we go. So I hope you are all seeing a big blue blotch that's very artistic provided to you by Microsoft and the makers of PowerPoint. And uh, it says, making Commedia dell'arte happen. Uh, really the important one is gonna be this next screen. Uh, if I can get the computer to run to it, there we go. Recipe for Commedia performance. So this is my very basic recipe. These are your focus points. Uh, this is where I suggest you, if you are going to try to produce Commedia in some fashion, you write these down, and then you actually write down at least one step that you're gonna do in each of these categories. And trust me, it might look a little overwhelming at first, but it's not hard. Um, you can get started and do the real easy level. And then if you are really feeling geeky about it, you can do the deep dive. There's a whole range of activities that you can have in there. And um, let's see, in here on, in the Complete Anachronist itself, it is on page seven, right here. So the recipe that you see in front of you on the slides is also in the book on page seven. This is where we start. Uh, so I am gonna run you through those. And also I wanna show you on the last slide, here are links. Um, uh, the first one I've already talked about, sca.org, go to the marketplace and you can buy the complete anachronists. Um, and you know, it's not a lot of money we're, doing, we're dealing with here. So uh, I highly recommend uh, going and getting a copy of these two, both of them, 172 and 173. They're meant to be used together. Uh, and then there's my troops webpage, eforenzi.com. Uh, this is just one of three troops that uh, I have managed 
My first troop is East Gandali back in the mid realm, and you guys will highly likely see them pop up every so often when there's occasion to. And then there's the uh, troop that I built at Penzig, and it has become a private troop over the years uh, called the Commedia All Stars. And right now, I can tell you, we are definitely uh, finding ways to have some Commedia fun online. So watch out for that. That's going to be published sometime down the road. Um, and on our webpage, uh, on my webpage for eForenzi, I have some information on all of that. There's also a tab that's very clearly marked as starter kit. So go there and there are a lot of things that are also covered in the book, but it's a quick and easy webpage link for you to see. Also, my personal blog is sophia.scottmar.com and that has just a whole ton of resources in it. And there's also my dear beloved friend and best research partner ever is Mistress Lucetta de Cosimo. She has her own uh, blog webpage at lucettadecosimo.com. And she has lots of other things that she researches. She researches fairy tales and death rituals and um, all sorts of crazy stuff that's brilliant and exciting, and as well as Commedia dell'arte. So go take a look at her webpage, lucettadecosimo.com. And Lucetta just has a huge ton of things in her brain, many of which are very funny. So uh, take a look at that. Now I am gonna stop this screen share. Oh, by the way, I just want to mention, if you want to copy these slides for a quick and easy reference, I suggest going to sophia.scottandlara.com. Uh, go to that web page. It's easy to remember and just type in so you don't actually need the link to copy paste. Uh, but sophia.scottandlara.com. Uh, go there and th that's where I keep all of my resources, everything that I could possibly take from my brain, wrench it out and put it into a web page form. Uh, I've put it in there. So you can see these slides for quick, easy reference. You can also go to eForenzi. There's lots of great stuff there. So uh, I'm going to take a breath here and um, uh, change my screen share to show you some of the um, actual complete anachronists. Uh, we're going to be looking at a next to final copy, if I can share it. Here we go. Uh, this is going to be a next to final copy uh, in a PDF form of my uh, complete anachronist. So this is just so I can share it online. I'm using a PDF. So hopefully you can see it. Uh, Amy, could you uh, uh, confirm that you're seeing complete anachronist issue 173? Yep. Yeah, super. Thanks so much. Okay, okay. You remember that breath I said I was going to take? Um, I'm going to take that now. And if you guys have any questions, now's a good time. You can say it into the microphone or put it in the chat box. Okay, there you go. That's the breath. All right, uh, here we go. <laughs> We're going to dive in here uh, to the complete anachronist and uh, walk through it. And I'm going to talk to the highlights of it. Um, here's all of the credits. And I do want to make sure you take a look real quick at the credits because the complete anachronist staff is top notch. Um, Ellen Rawson helped me so much with editing and Elise Fleming and Sue Gilbert, Vicki Hyde and Susan Callahan. They were just amazing people. So big woot woot, thank you to them again. It was, you know, four years ago and I still appreciate the work that they did. And they continue to do this work for people published uh, through this thing. So it's really wonderful. Uh, alrighty, so we're gonna keep going and you see table of contents looks an awful lot like my recipe, doesn't it? Mm, look at that. Um, so I talked about what we're gonna look at. Uh, I wanna take a moment to talk about why Commedia matters in the SCA and why you might decide to go and produce it instead of anything else. Um, I find that there is a certain kind of performer that really loves to do this, greatly because part of what makes Commedia Commedia is that it is improvised. It is uh, a way of producing a play that was very popular in the Italian 16th century. And it was based on improvisation. So it's the same time frame in England when Shakespeare was writing beautiful poetry and magnificent art was coming out of his scripts. And you memorized Shakespeare's lines exactly when you were producing a Shakespeare play. 
Not so in Commedia. In Commedia, you, um, as an actor, you would portray a story with a storyline and scenes that were defined, but in an outline form. And we called those scenarios. And the actor's job was to portray that uh, piece of the story uh, it, with improvisation. And so these skills of improvising your lines are different from uh, memorizing lines. And some people prefer that. So I am one of those people. I'm not really great at memorizing. I can do it if I have to, but that's not my happy place. I love to make stuff up in the moment. I love living on the edge and thinking creatively and letting my brain flow in that way of seeing what's gonna come out of my mouth. And if you have a very basic guide of what story you're telling and you can play within that, there's a whole different world of creative uh, performance that some actors really love to do. So uh, that's, you know, it's a difference between scripted theater and improvisational theater. And that's one reason why Commedia works. Also, you can uh, get away with very little rehearsal time. I'm not saying that rehearsal is not important. It's actually a lot more important than you think. But you can get away with producing some Commedia with very little rehearsal time. And for those of us in the SCA that are volunteers, we have our real life and then all that volunteer work we do. And there's a lot of stuff demanding our time. So if you narrow it down to the tiniest amount of time you could spend uh, producing a play and enjoying the actor side of your life, this is one way where you can do it. So uh, I highly recommend if you're into uh, improvisation, give this a try. There's also another piece about Commedia that works out really well, and that's that men and women share the stage equally. The women as part of the actor pool in uh, the Italian Renaissance era was a big reason of why Commedia was such a blossoming new art in uh, the middle to late 1500s. What happened is women were allowed on stage, but it was part of the Renaissance shift in theater becoming not controlled by just the church, but being produced by people that were regular average everyday people. And the stories were about real people's lives, not just Bible stories anymore. It was a growth period. And so women being on the stage was exciting and new and tab taboo breaking, and it worked. When you see Commedia produced in a marketplace and there's a beautiful woman on stage, and she's speaking, she's speaking poetry, she's falling in love. It's new and exciting. A beautiful woman, oh my gosh. When did women get on the stage? Well, it's comedy, it's happening, it's the Renaissance, get with it. You know, there's a million reasons why it worked. And um, so when you're reenacting that in the modern day, in the SCA environment, women and men uh, share the stage equally. There are juicy characters on both sides of that gender, uh, of the gender fence, and the, um, the same thing doesn't quite happen in Shakespeare unless you make it. You can do gender bending, switching genders in Shakespeare a lot and other plays. There's all sorts of great stuff you can do there. It's just, Commedia is a little different in that uh, there, were, um, uh, there were really amazing, juicy uh, empowerment roles for women uh, that are just a little different in Commedia. So I love them. And that's one of the things that made Commedia really, um, uh, really important for me to do. So you can see here on the screens, there are some things that uh, you can read more about, but those are the highlights for me. Um, and uh, you know, there's some things that are gonna work really great for some people. So again, it's a style of art that some folks really, really like to do. Um, now you'll see that there's a lot of uh, Commedia blossoming right now. I'm gonna say around 30 years ago, there were two troops that were mostly producing media in the SCA, E. Sebastiani and E. Genisi. And uh, there was also the Golden Stag players out in California, but there wasn't a whole lot of mixing. So I don't know a whole lot about them there. Uh, I haven't met a whole lot of them. I know they exist and I'm pretty sure they still are producing at least one play a year for their 12th night. Uh, then there's also a whole bunch of little, uh, little troops that just sort of have blossomed and you can see them all there. Um, and uh, they are, most of them are still, uh, still working. Now, if you want to do it yourself and be another troop, you know, another blossom on the great rose bush that is Commedia, um, 
then start with the research. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the research is not scary because actually Lucetta has done most of it for us. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't, say, I shouldn't say it's all her, but she has certainly done an amazing job of compiling a lot of research that you're going to need right here in the complete anachronist number 172. If, the, if you only read one thing at all, read this. It is 60 pages and it's got a whole lot of really great deep dive into pre-1600 life based on uh, primary sources, and some secondary sources and a whole lot of time that she spent digging into that. There's also a huge world out there. Uh, now I'm gonna tell you that there are some books I found particularly useful. Oh, oh I left one on the shelf. Hold on a second, it's on the shelf. I'm getting it, I'm not going away. I'm still here, I'm just getting, look. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Sorry, 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 that was, that was, uh, Slightly silly of me, sorry. Um, all right, so look, there's one book that I started with. It's this one. And this, the author is Barry Grantham. He wrote a book called Playing Commedia. I love it because it's a very simple introduction to the characters and the movement of how they moved, kind of how they were. So if you're gonna start off with some research about the real life and the, and the history and the primary sources, start with The Complete Anachronist 172 by Lucetta. And then take a look at this one. This is a modern day book that still looks at the same characters and gives you a small, very easily digestible summary and also int um, introduces you to how they move. Barry Grantham is an amazing man. I got to take a workshop with him last year and he is primarily a dancer. His first career was dancing and later on he spread out into commedia and he's brilliant in bringing to life the movement of these characters. So, this is a book to go to next. There is also uh, this book. This is the, uh, the primary source most of us in the SCA turn to for looking at scenarios. Uh, this is written by a man named Flaminio Scala, published in 1611, and it has two, um, two uh, uh, what interpretations, no, translations into English. One is this one by uh, Henry Salerno, and the other one is uh, again, uh, done by a guy named Richard Andrews. They're both very cool. Uh, and then that deep dive, you remember the deep dive I told you about, if you really want to geek out, is um, Margaret Kotritsky. I absolutely adore this. This is her, um, I think her uh, doctoral thesis uh, work. She took all of the images she could find anywhere in the world that referred to commedia in a visual form. Uh, commedia between uh, 18, uh, 15, 1560 and 1620. That is prime time for SCA reenactment. And uh, what she did is she gave us little tiny black and white images of all of the images she found and where you can find them online and where you can dig into them. So that is that deep dive into research. So uh, I'm actually going to show you in The Complete Anachronist a little bit more of what you can look forward to. So you see in the research resources box at, box at the bottom of the page, uh, the easy level of research is Complete Anachronists. 172 in particular, that's the one that uh, Lucetta wrote, and then 173 is mine with uh, my other friends. And uh, you can also look at Facebook groups. There's a ton of Facebook groups out there on Commedia, there's one that is the Society for Creative Anachronisms Facebook group. Uh, there's also another book, Handbook for Troops by Redlin and Crick. Um, this is a great one. Ollie Crick is brilliant and a really, really great actor. And uh, he and Redlin wrote this book on troops. So if you wanna get into a, a little quick view of how groups, particularly in period, and then over the centuries have worked together, try that one. And then, um, oops, all right, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt one more time because I got to plug in my computer. I'm sorry, hold on. Uh, Plugging it in because I thought it was and it isn't. Uh, 
All right, sorry for that, uh, working from home. There we go, all right, we're better, we have power. Um, so the, um, the easy level of research is those books that I recommend. And there's one other thing that uh, is, you know, it might be a more of a medium uh, level of research. There is a wonderful online tour you can take uh, of a castle in Germany, in the town of Landschut. And it is this one. I actually went there in uh, October and my husband and I had a really great bucket list uh, trip in Germany. And this is one of the things we, sat, we saw. The Castle Trausnitz in the city of Landschut in Germany is a castle where there is a staircase that's a six story staircase that's a kind of a spiral that was used by the servants. And there is a mural painted there of a Commedia show that happened in the mid 1500s. And um, this is a brilliant first, um, first ever of its kind mural of a painted, of a Commedia show happening in that castle. So there is both an online virtual tour of that that you can just click around the web page and of course that link is in all the stuff I already mentioned in the complete anachronist my web page is everything you can go find that really easy and also um, I am working on a video of my trip out there to uh, see that uh, they let us in I asked very nicely in German and they said uh, yeah and let me in <laughs> and my husband and I were drool what well, we didn't drool on it we cleaned it up uh, but I was drooling a lot and uh, you know we didn't touch anything and we just took a lot of pictures and videos so um, that is a brilliant way to see what they saw hundreds of years ago in terms of what did Commedia look like now I'm gonna just touch really quickly on the medium and challenging levels of research that you can do um, the you can spend your whole life doing this and some people have uh for me it's just a hobby uh but it's a really passionate hobby and i'm going to tell you one of my favorite books that you can dive into a lot is this one by douche oh sorry um there's some boobs on the front okay so there's some boobs so be careful of the boobs um you know it's not for it's not for everybody uh, little children's consumption you know uh but the this book uh has magnificent pictures and descriptions. Uh, it's by um, Pierre-Louis de Chartres. It's French. So uh, it is a French book. It is in French, but there are English uh, translations of it. So de Chartres is the man and that has great pictures of how Commedia looked. So it's going to be a great way for you as you produce Commedia to take a look at, you know, things like that that are woodcuts and portraits and uh, other kinds of paintings. So you, if you wanna dive deeper, that's the kind of thing that you can look at. Uh, also, there is uh, the great leader of Commedia nowadays is Maestro Antonio Fava, and he has a handful of books out. His uh, classic is the comic mask in the Commedia dell'arte. That is a thick read, and it is by the master that is nowadays teaching uh, the ancient art uh, and he comes from a family where it's been handed down. Uh, so I highly recommend diving deep into that. Now, even deeper for the absolute maximum geekitude of getting into the depth of the tiny little details and everything that you might want to spend your life reading about. Uh, there is uh, the Scala and the Scala scenarios are uh, in English translation by two people. One is Henry Salerno, uh, and that's this one. And the other one is um, Mr. Andrews. Uh, now, Mr. Andrews only translated and uh, evaluates 30 out of the 50 scenarios. Uh, but, you know, if you want to dive in and look at two different English translations and interpretations of what they mean, they're very different. And uh, again, uh, be prepared to spend, you know, months of your life di diving into that. So again, if you want to, there is a deep, deep, deep rabbit hole there if you want to get into that. All right, so that's the research. You can take a weekend or the rest of your life to uh, dive into that research. All right, the next piece, networking. There is nothing better than talking to other people that have done it and want to do it. So this is where my personal extrovert superpowers have been great for me. And I know that not everybody 
uh, pegs out the meter on extrovert like I do, that's where I live. I'm on the end of the spectrum of extrovert versus, versus introvert. Um, you know, big surprise to anybody who's met me. Um, the uh, value of networking, however, is really important for anybody that wants to do theater arts. You got to talk to people. So even for the most introverted um, uh, theater type people, networking is really going to be uh, a big piece of your life. Uh, and the, um, the easy way to do it, actually, I have here earlycomedia.com. Um, I haven't really fleshed that out as much as we've seen it fleshed out on Facebook. I think Facebook is a really great place to meet people who are in, uh, in the realm of Comedia. And so if you want to meet some people and chat with them, Facebook is a great place to be. Um, there are a bunch of different groups. Go take a look. And so if you want to, you know, take the easy path and be a little just taste of it, dip your toe in, I would highly recommend getting into some groups on Comedia on Facebook. Now the medium level for networking is, uh, I think, Pensive War. And I'm also gonna add to that because in the past four years, other things have popped up. We had a Known World Comedia Symposium uh, almost two years ago, and uh, the great and magnificent troupe Eugenisi in, in the Pittsburgh area, uh, they hosted it with their local canton and it was a wonderful experience. And more online activities and interkingdom activities are happening. And so what you're going to see is more than just Penzig, but more things blossoming. So I put Penzig in the complete anachronist and, you know, that was four years ago. So growth has happened. It will continue to happen. Uh, and then if you want to dive even deeper, go to workshops. Uh, I have here listed the workshops by Maestro Antonio Fava. He does workshops, uh, or at least before the virus happened. Uh, he had been doing workshops in America uh, like once a year. And if you watch out for those, again, in the Facebook groups, they're usually advertised. Uh, if you look out for those, you'll be able to find people who are the deep level geeks that love and feel and breathe Comedia. Um, you know, if I get the chance to go to one of these workshops, I'm going to be in hog heaven. I got to go to one other workshop that I can also recommend. I got to go last year to Barry Grantham's workshop. That was brilliant fun. It was wonderful. It was around the Easter holiday uh, in England. So it was in Oxford, England. And it was uh, a workshop that's actually about historic performing arts in the Renaissance and Baroque period. And it's called the Calamy School. And uh, that's C-H-A, Calamy. Oh, thank you, Amy. Let's make sure to treat them, uh, let's teach them young, okay? Let's, let's get the kids involved in Comedia as early as possible. And that's just awesome. Hello, little Comedia student. <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, hey. So the, uh, the workshop for Barry Grantham is brilliant. And if you can go, go. Uh, for me, it was a dream come true because I'm that level of geek. Uh, so if you want to dive deep, go to the Calamy School in the Easter timeframe and uh, attend that workshop. You get five days of deep, intense workshopping with Barry. And then you also get some other tastes of dance and music and costuming and music. Did I say music? All sorts of beautiful things that all feed into Comedia. And you get a great uh, uh, performance at the end uh, with, your, uh, with your fellow students. So it was a dream come true for me. If you're also at my deep level of geek, then uh, you know I highly recommend going to it. But if all you wanna do is just taste it, go back to the other end of the spectrum and just hang out on Facebook a little bit. So like I said, there's all sorts of options for you. Let's move on down to scenarios. Okay, here we are gonna look at scenarios just a little bit. All right. Okay, by the way, I'm gonna take another breath. I think I have to, do that about every 20 minutes. So I'm going to pause again for questions, just in case. All right, super. So you need a scenario. It's a script. And the scenarios that were used in period, I'm going to open up Mr. Uh, Scala here. They look like this. I know it's hard to see. But what you're looking at is a, a list of scenes, scenes that are described in um, Detail that is um, not detailed. It's a very general description of a scene. For instance, uh, Pantalone enters 
and tells his daughter Isabella she's going to have to marry the Spanish captain. Isabella does not want to marry the Spanish captain, so she gets angry and leaves. That would be a description of a scene. And so those two actors playing Pantalone and Isabella have to just figure out how they're going to do that. Uh, that's the improvisation. And one act usually has, you know, anywhere between 10 and 20 scenes. And you can have a whole lot of those uh, scenes. I'm sorry, uh, you can have a whole lot of those scenes. The period um, scenarios had three acts. So that's a lot of material. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, if you wanna go with the easy route, oh, Anja is saying it is sitcom. Absolutely, thank you, Anja. You are absolutely right, sitcoms um, nowadays that we see on TV are the same universal truth that was entertaining hundreds of years ago. Absolutely, uh, it is exactly the same thing. So um, when you're looking at scenarios, you can go deep dive into the period stuff that happened. And if you want to recreate what actually happened back then, you're gonna need around 11 to 13, maybe 15 actors. That's a lot. And three acts, that's a long time. <laughs> So that's going to be a huge undertaking. I've done it twice. In the 20 years I've been doing Comedia, I've pulled it off twice. So it's hard. It's really amazing. It was tons of fun. It was amazing. And it was really hard. Um, and I can tell you that there are easier ways to do it. Uh, so I'm going to back down a little bit and say there are other scenarios out there. Uh, there are a whole lot of scenarios that uh, my troops have uh, written together as a team and we've published them. And uh, there's also a bunch of other people out there that are doing that. In The Complete Anachronist, there are a few of those. Um, there are also uh, some scenarios that are just published on uh, blogs. So uh, Lucetta has some, I've got some. In fact, on the eForenzi, webpage, eforenzi.com, under the starter kit, there is one beautiful, classic, easy scenario for five people that covers the real basic tropes of Isabella and Orazio want to get married, their parents maybe do, maybe don't want to let them, and they end up happy in the end. So the, um, uh, the this middle ground is where Skatians and other, uh, other artists have written their own scenarios for a whole lot of different reasons. So you can find them a lot in uh, web pages like the, ones we've, uh, like the ones we've done. Hello, there's a little budding Orazio. Oh, I can absolutely see him playing Orazio in a little, a little while. That's our handsome young man. That's awesome. Um, so also, if you wanna go super easy, let's say your very first taste. And this is a magical moment because it's the first taste that is just so special. You can take three people and make a very short little skit happen. In fact, in the appendix of Complete Anachronist 173, there is a scenario built for that. So if you want to take just a tiny little taste, you take yourself and two friends. And it's not like a lifetime commitment to build a troupe. It's just one moment of making art. You take the scenario we have in the back of that, uh, Complete Anachronist, and you might take, it's 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how much you uh, improvise. And you can just put that on for a few friends, do it at an event or in your backyard, and experience what a Commedia play is like in a real tiny, easy way. So I highly recommend taking uh, a first step that's easy, so you get that feeling of, uh, of accomplishment, and joy of enjoying this art, and then see where you wanna go with it. So the scenario in the back of um, The Complete Anachronist only has three people. The one on my webpage, eforenzi.com, under the starter kit, that makes five people. So those are two easy places to start. And there are more where that came from. So uh, you can always post to the Facebook group, say, hey, I've got four people. Anybody got a scenario for me? Uh, and you can, you will, you will get responses, I guarantee you. There are people on that Facebook group that will be happy to share scenarios with you or help you write your own for whatever tiny little group you have. Uh, alrighty, uh, you know, in case I missed it, 
I didn't exactly start this class explaining the whole basics of Commedia. I did kind of assume you knew a little bit of it. There are all sorts of ways to get up to speed on the basic pieces of Commedia, particularly the characters. Let me just mention that there are a lot, there's a, a list of characters and the main ones are, are here in the complete anachronist. All of these are archetypes. So as I said before, the Commedia dell'arte explosion that happened in the middle of the 1500s was about the shift of theater becoming more about real people and people sharing stories about their real lives rather than just the church putting on Bible stories to tell the story of uh, you know, what the church wanted you to learn. So this is an explosion into real life. So these are archetypes. Archetypes like Pantalone is a constant character and he is the nasty old man. He's rich, he's powerful, and he is the like 1%. Nowadays, we've got this image of the 1% of the powerful rich people and everybody knows them. So what is the story we want to tell about those people and their interactions with us? Uh, and those other people are things like their children. Uh, their children are the, uh, the, um, the young lovers that are men and women who fall in love and want to get married. And then they have all sorts of challenges to getting married. There's also a whole slew of servants, both well-intentioned servants and selfish servants, capable servants and stupid servants. There's a whole range of servants and they drive the plot. And then you have some wildcard characters like the Capitano Spavento and the uh, Senora. Uh, those, are, uh, those are kind of wildcard characters and they were very, very popular. Um, uh, they certainly add a lot of flavor to any story. So I'm going to encourage you to uh, take some time to just look at the complete anachronist or any other summary of uh, Commedia characters. Um, I also taught another class earlier on that. So I'll take you, um, uh, I'll encourage you to do that uh, in another time frame. Uh, so here I'm going to show you a very simple three scene, three actor scenario, Isabella's escape. I have done this a bazillion times with a bazillion different kinds of people. And honestly, I got to tell you, my favorite was the teenagers. I taught a class once to some teenagers that were just hilarious. <laughs> they had this great high energy and super dramatic overacting kind of way of presenting this. And it was adorable. So, uh, you know, having some teenagers to play with is tons of fun. Um, so this is a little scenario uh, that's just uh, a few scenes with a few people and you can take it and run with it. And boy, howdy, those teenagers ran with it. It was hilarious. Uh, so th that's what I'm gonna tell you about uh, scenarios. And I'm gonna keep moving on because we're getting to uh, almost an hour here. I'm just gonna take a moment to talk about Iron Commedia. Iron Commedia is a great concept. Um, Ooh, and I have something to say. Uh, last Shrewsbury Fair, one of the private schools had a bunch of kids doing one scene from Shakespeare and one comedian. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> exactly. School kids are just the best when it comes to creativity and energy. Uh, I love it. Middle schoolers. That's awesome. <laughs> Super fun. Um, I want to just touch on Iron Commedia. This was a concept that was um, uh, invented by uh, the troupe Iverdi Confusi out in Cleveland when they were doing a, uh, a Royal University of the Mid-Realm event and what they did is they started this in that event and then uh, brought it to Penzig and then taught it and then I learned it and I teach it and a whole bunch of people just uh, really joined into this concept and it's been spreading all over the world. The idea is you gather up a whole bunch of people. This is in person when you have in-person events. In person in the morning in the early part of the day and you say who wants to put on a play today? And then you run through the basics of Commedia, like what the characters are and what we're gonna do. And then you write a scenario right then and there for whoever is playing and what characters they wanna do. And then in the later afternoon, maybe the hour before court or something, you produce that play, you put it on, and it is one intense day. And it is so much fun for putting on one play all at once. If all you've got is that one day, you can do it. It is a lot of fun, and we put the uh, uh, the instructions here in um, 
uh, in the complete anachronist book. Again, it's guidelines, not rules. There are a lot of different ways to do it, and this is just one method uh, that, uh, that I like. And uh, there's a whole bunch of folks out there doing it. Uh, you know, it originated with uh, the troupe Verdi Confusi, and uh, you know, we certainly thank them for their contribution to the creativeness of our, uh, of our community. Um, so, a bunch of instructions, guidelines on how to do that. Let's keep going. Do, 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 do. Uh, challenging comedia scenarios, actors. Okay, I'm just going to touch on this real quick. Recruiting actors is always hard, but the whole point is to enjoy some artistic fun with your friends. Um, oh, and uh, Anja has put in a link in our chat to an Iron Comedia session. Oh, that looks great. I'm going to look at that when we're done here today. Thank you, Anja. Thank you. Um, when it comes to finding actors, the real uh, success is in finding people who love this kind of play, who love to do this kind of thing. And you might find that recruiting in your local SCA community has, you know, some hot and cold success. You might also try to reach out to your local theater community. Um, so various civic theater groups could be real interested in doing this. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to reach out, but the key is to find people who love this kind of fun and uh, start with a few of your close friends. You know, like I said, you can start with three people, yourself and two friends, and give it a try and then build from there. Uh, there's a whole world of what you can do to recruit and build a troop. That's a whole nother class. Uh, but I can tell you, start with the people you enjoy playing with. That's really important. All right, I'm going to touch on costumes. And um, I got to tell you, there's a whole world of costuming that you can get into. In the SCA, it happens to be real easy that a lot of us already have costumes that are appropriate for Commedia. So we can throw together stuff that's real easy with garb people already has. Um, so again, with the easy, medium, and challenging levels, the easy level is to just kind of grab garb that's close to what you might need for particular characters. Uh, medium is to go make new garb uh, that will fit the characters. And then the challenging is digging deep and recreating exactly what they would have worn back then. Your best friend in doing that is Mistress Drea de Pellegrini. She is one of my favorite people in the whole world. And she wrote the section here in The Complete Anachronist on costuming. So you can dive deep if you want to. You can also start out real easy with just pieces of garb you already have. So um, there are some characters that had very specific clothing, like Pantalone had a red, uh, red outfit that would be old fashioned for whatever year you are reenacting. So pick something that's gonna be 20 or 30 years out of fashion. Uh, for Pantalone. Datore, he is the know-it-all professor guy, the, um, uh, you know, kind of the absent-minded professor, the guy who's uh, always talking a lot but says very little of substance, and he has a black academic robe, and I found that you can easily start with a regular graduation robe, the kind of thing that we use uh, nowadays for, you know, high school, college graduations. So there are some real easy quick things that you can do for those specific uh, characters. Also, the, um, uh, some of the characters just wear clothing that was appropriate for that time period, the lovers in particular. So Isabella and Orazio, Flavio and Flaminia, the, uh, the lovers that are gonna be, um, you know, your, your general young adults, they are gonna wear costuming, uh, they're gonna wear clothing of the time period. So whatever is the normal clothing a noble person would wear, a man or woman during the time, the year that you are reenacting, just put them in that clothing. So we do have, thankfully, a whole lot of folks already making Italian garb in the SCA. So you can beg, borrow, and steal. Uh, not steal, don't steal, borrow. Um, uh, as much as you want to from your buddies. Uh, so I'm just gonna point to this and say that you can absolutely dive deep into all sorts of amazing stuff for um, uh, making costuming. Uh, I, I'm going to show you just a couple of bits of the complete anachronist here. Uh, uh, Drea de Pellegrini, her real name is Drea Lead. She's a genius. And she has been able to communicate to people how to make the very complicated garb. 
uh, beautifully. And I highly recommend her as a teacher. She also drew all of these great um, uh, pictures of um, Italian costumes for the Complete Anachronist. And she did an amazing job of really communicating what they're supposed to look like if you wanna do that deep dive. Uh, by the way, here's a, a picture that she drew of uh, Francesco Andrini playing Capitano Spavento, uh, and it's pretty famous. Uh, Spavento is a character that's really difficult to costume, uh, at least for me, because there's a million different ways of interpreting it. Um, the basic idea is that he's Spanish, and he's a, uh, a braggart soldier who actually is out of work and has been out of work for a long time, so he's poor. So if he's dressed too flamboyantly, uh, you know, then that looks like he has a lot more money than he does. So, you know, it's all about interpretation and how you want to play the character. Uh, there, here is the, um, uh, here's the Pantalone discussion. Again, this is the deep dive part and Del Torre. Andrea was nice enough to put this figure in here for a, uh, how to make one of these gowns that is like the graduation gown I was talking about for Del Torre. Um, now we're going to talk about masks for just a minute. Masks is a real key piece of Commedia because that's how uh, some of the characters were portrayed back in the day. They are leather masks that are half masks that cover the top of your face. And I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures here. Uh, here we go. Now, again, another one of the geniuses I got to work with uh, for this section of my Complete Anachronist, uh, his name is uh, Drake. Uh, his SCA name is Ian Drake, uh, and he is one of the best mask makers I've ever known. He's a leather worker by uh, professionally, and he does an amazing amount of leather working in the SCA. One of the things he's gotten to be real uh, famous for and amazing at is making Canadian masks. He also plays Capitano Spavento, and so he has a great actor side of him too. So you can see there are different styles of masks, and these are relatively consistent for these characters. So uh, it's kind of a deeper dive into costuming to add the masks. It is, however, a very key piece of what makes Commedia Commedia. You can make the masks yourself and reenact the whole lifestyle of an actor hundreds of years ago who was making their own mask. You can also buy them online, you can also uh, custom get them custom made by someone like Drake. Uh, so Drake has very reasonable prices and he does extremely good work. So I cannot recommend him enough. Uh, he's a great artist uh, that will help you out. There's also all sorts of uh, resources online for purchasing masks online. They get to be kind of expensive. You can get um, leather ones, paper mache ones, rubber, uh, and um, you know any number of options on masks. Uh, so this is all a whole description in the Complete Anachronist that, um, uh, that Drake did for us on how to make masks. I'm going to touch on scenery just really quickly. If you're in a real theater space, you can do a million different things with scenery. Uh, usually what we do in an SCA event or any kind of like public fair, if you're going to do a street fair or something like that, is uh, we will put up a curtain like this. You see, it's really just uh, two supports on either end and a curtain that's two sheets sewn together. Uh, that is really easy for defining your space and say, this is our little theater space. And you can put it anywhere. You can put it inside, you can put it outside, and it defines an acting space. So you can hide behind the curtain, come out in uh, front and define your, uh, your space. You do not need it, however. There are ways of taking a space and just defining it as actors and saying, we're gonna perform here. Um, so you can also get more creative and uh, the, again, the more challenging level and deeper dive. Uh, like my buddies at uh, E. Sebastiani, I'm gonna show you some of the things they do. Uh, here, uh, canvas flats. E. Sebastiani has these canvas flats and some pictures are in here. Uh, and they are relatively simple. They're painted white with some charcoal uh, sketches on them. Uh, and they take them to Pensick and they set them up on a stage and they look really beautiful. Um, you can also do all sorts of um, deep dive into what scenery was uh, back in the day in the uh, 1500s. That's another deep, deep dive. But I recommend if you're producing it now, a little curtain 
or like one uh, one portable flat is going to be probably your most practical way to do it. And if you're taking the easy level and just trying it out, you know, a little three person scene, don't even worry about scenery. Just don't even worry about it. Take a space and just define it as your own um, personal space. Uh, now, finding an event and finding uh, a, um, a place to do it, especially nowadays, since we are living all online, that's a whole nother thing to think about. My, my basic message to you right now is when we are in person and when we're having events, it is really easiest to talk to your event staff, particularly the autocrat, and say, this is what I'd like to do. What space do you have? And network with people and ask them for some time and space and get comfortable with that process. Do it a few times. There will be all sorts of opportunities. You may not have a great big audience, but when you get started, share with your friends and ask them to come and watch you. And then you build with that one step at a time. Start small and let it grow. Uh, I do not recommend starting with one big great vision of 100 people all watching you at once and applauding. You know, that's a lovely dream and it takes time to grow there. So uh, start small, let it grow, start with your friends and then they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and you, how, you know how that works. So the growth is what I highly recommend. Now I'm going to mention real quick online. I'm teaching a class on June 13th for moving performing arts from real life to online. So if you wanna know more about that, come to my class on June 13th with Atlanta University. However, right now I'm gonna recommend, you can write a scenario for online. If you've seen Saturday Night Live, they have done exactly that. They have written their skits for being like a Zoom call and uh, being the kind of online interaction that we have nowadays. And it can be done for Commedia too. You just have to write the scenario to fit the venue. So the same strategy applies, whether you're looking at what events you're going to play at, if you're gonna be at an SCA event or a street fair for your local uh, city or in a park somewhere, look for your venue and write to it. So I have a theory that I'm working on right now with my troupe that we can write scenarios for online presentation, for people to come in and out of a Zoom call or a Google Hangouts or whatever your, um, uh, whatever your venue is, and write the scenario to that venue. There are, there are ways to do it uh, where people will you know, enter the room and exit the room, maybe go to a breakout room, uh, but they will be presented on the screen just like they're presented on a stage. So I highly recommend trying that out. Uh, we are trying it out with eForenzy right now, and so stay tuned uh, to see what that result is. Uh, so I'm wrapping up right now. I just wanna make sure Amy knows I'm not gonna take uh, her whole day up. Uh, but uh, the last little piece I just wanna mention is administration. There always needs some cat herding. Uh, you're gonna need to do a little bit of uh, organizational tasks. Somebody's gonna have to do that. Uh, I feel lucky in that uh, I've had a lot of great people to work with and they don't mind when I am a shepherd dog yipping at them saying, please, you know, sign up for when you're going to go to rehearsal. Um, there's, uh, there's some administration you got to do. Uh, so I'm coming to the end of the Complete Anachronist. And um, uh, in the end, uh, in the last little piece here, we've got some mentions on copyright. You're going to have to deal with copyright. The whole idea is just keep track of who has uh, copyright so that they can license it if they want to or use Creative Commons licenses. I highly recommend taking a look at this. I've also got some speed bumps and possible solutions in the back. Uh, you know, the classic one is people don't know what Commedia is. That's okay. You can educate them, teach classes, and uh, point to online resources. All sorts of stuff that you can do. Uh, I'm a glass half full person for things that you can do. So this is a bunch of um, recommendations on how to get over speed bumps. Uh, and then um, uh, there's a whole bunch of resources here in the appendix, scenarios and more networking and good web pages. So I'm going to um, I'm going to wrap up and I went a little bit over time. Thank you, Amy, for uh, indulging me in my extra seven minutes. And uh, I really appreciate everybody uh, being here and I really appreciate having this uh, recorded so that we can share it with the world. So uh, in the end, I recommend 
uh, start with the complete anachronists. Uh, the, those of us that all joined in to make them happen did so to serve you, the people, and spread the joy of Commedia. All right, Nicholas has one question. Suggestions for an introvert who deals with some anxiety at times who might like to try these maybe perhaps sometime eventually? Absolutely, I totally get that. Um, it is really, really important you find the joy. Find the piece that you love. If you love a particular character and you just really love to do him or, or her, whatever it is, then pick that and then go find one or two other friends. And like I said, start simple and easy, just a little tiny piece and keep the joy as your motivation. It doesn't have to be a brilliant piece of art. It doesn't have to be award winning. It doesn't have to have a huge audience. What's important is that you find the joy. And so even when you have the anxiety come up, you will always have that joy as your motivation. Uh, so um, also, I recommend the class that's happening later today that is taking the te teeth out of stage fright. My sister is my soulmate and uh, the often uh, balance of me. So she has been an introvert that suffers with stage fright. And for the past 30 years, she's found ways to manage it. And so she and I are team teaching tonight, a stage fright class. Uh, so that's gonna be at six o'clock central time, seven o'clock Eastern time. So I highly recommend that for those of you who are saying this looks like fun, but I'm a little nervous. Um, there are ways to deal with stage fright and I highly recommend for every introvert out there that says, I love this, but I'm nervous about it and I'm feeling anxious. Absolutely, you are not alone. There are plenty of actors out there that feel exactly the same way and they all have, I can't say all, many of them have found joy in doing this kind of theater art. So I highly recommend giving it a try, start small. Start small and easy with your trusted friends, do a little thing here, a little thing there and then let it grow and voila, you've got Comedia. So, all right, uh, thank you so much, Amy. Thank you so, so, so much. I really appreciate you being here. And a super big thanks to Midrealm Rum staff. You guys are doing the awesomest thing, making this available to us. And thank you so much for helping us reach out to the whole world and record it and stream it and make it available so we can still do our SCA fun thing while we're all at home. So I'm going to wrap up there and say thank you, everybody, and say super big thanks to Amy and Rum staff. Thank you.